Now here's, a, here's an idea of why common sense should tell you that Islam, like many other religions, is not common sense. Because of course homosexuality is perfectly natural. In all, in all animal species almost it's natural. It occurs with a 10% frequency. Okay? In fact, there are good evolutionary reasons for homosexuality. So in that sense, there's no reason and a fundamental... Why would a god who thought it was a sin make it natural among all species? I don't think the sheep, by the way, which 10% of sheep are long-term homosexual relationships. Okay? <laughs> why would a god who thought it was a sin create sheep who don't have a soul, who, can't, who aren't able to think about it, be homosexual. That's the kind of nonsense that we have to ask. And the only way we can determine if it's nonsense is by looking at the world around us, not by deducing it, not by listening to the words of ignorant individuals and Iron Age, Iron Age peasants who didn't even know the Earth orbited the sun. Wisdom and learning comes from observing the world around us. And we shouldn't take our wisdom from people who didn't even understand the way the world worked. Thank you. I would say morality is impossible without science. That's the point. Because, and, and religion is an example, as I, can't, as I say, I can't think of a more immoral document than the Old Testament. But, but the, the point is, if you don't know the consequences of your actions, then you can't even decide what's right and wrong. And so, to, to, to take, to make the, and so we have seen people's morality, if you want to call it morality, change. Slavery might have been okay because you might have believed that certain groups were inferior or not human. Science has told us that's wrong. You might have believed, as almost all religions do, that women are chattel. Science has told us that's wrong. You might have believed that homosexuality is evil. But science has told us that all mammalian species have homosexuality. That's, there's nothing in unnatural or evil about it. So to, to have a morality without science is empty. But the Islamic God, much like the Judeo-Christian God, is a real creep. This is a God, worse than Saddam Hussein, instead of tor torturing you just for your life, tortures you for infinity, forgive me the word, but eternity, let me use that word, eternity for not believing. For not believing, you're tortured for infinity. The tortures are actually described in the Quran, and you know it as well as I do. And the point is, if you just ask yourself common sense, if you were a divine being, say you had an ant colony that you made in your house, would you be offended if those ants didn't pay homage to you five, well, let's start with 50 times a day before Muhammad cut it down to 30 and then five. Would you be offended if those ants didn't pay homage to you five times a day? And if they didn't, if they didn't look up to you or didn't recognize your existence, would you destroy them? No, I mean, it just seems so petty. So why should we believe in a hateful, unmerciful, petty, sadomasochistic, homophobic, sexist God? It's just irrational. It's not sensible. And, and the, the point is that I, what my science is a human cultural activity. And in fact, if you read my writing, you'll see that I say the worth of science, in my opinion, is not from the technology. Well, we tend to love its technology, which has made the world a happier, healthier place for most people. But it's the fact that like art and music and literature, it forces us to reassess our place in the cosmos. It, it, it opens our eyes to the world. And art and music and literature do that, but so does science. And there's no sense in which science reduces the value of art, music, and literature. As, 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 and in fact, the most famous example I know of in that regard is from Richard Feynman, I wrote a book about, who said that a rainbow isn't any less beautiful because you understand how it's caused, it's much more beautiful. When you understand the amazing things that are happening, in fact, it's much more exciting. That's the great thing about science, which you can call atheism if you wish, is you're willing to change your beliefs. You're not assuming the answers before you ask the question. You're not assuming you know what's divinely right just because you interpret a certain book to mean a certain thing and someone else may interpret it to mean something else. You will agree there are different interpretations of every book including the Bible and the Koran. And so you, to presume that you know divine truth before you've asked the universe is not sensible. I think what you said is correct. You found, you found a way to find an ethical theory that makes those two apparently inconsistent things consistent. Okay, yeah, right. and I think, and I've had a lot of discussions on stage and off stage with various theologians whose 
job is to do just that, to find ways to resolve apparent inconsistencies, to find eth ethical solutions that validate their belief. But that is what's wrong, because the point of science and the reason it works is you don't just try and prove something you like to be true, you also try and prove it to be false. And that's what's really important. You don't just find yeah. a way to yeah. say the rainbows are caused by this or that. You actually try and see if your ideas are wrong and ask what's more plausible. And based on evidence and, and inquiry, what's more plausible. So what I find problematic is that the effort to find a rational excuse for something can work. But that doesn't make it right.